Thank you. Uh, I was requested to speak in French as well. I'm just going to give you a little bit of context about what's happening in Venezuela right now. For the, over the past 15 years, we've had an erosion of the rule of law. And we heard this morning, Tamara told us about how students are being killed for demonstrating, for expressing their ideas, how they are being jailed for expressing their ideas, how lawyers defending these students are also being imprisoned, where they are being tortured. And how we have political leaders who have also been thrown in jail. Leopoldo Lopez, uh, the, who has been in prison for more than one year now, over the last week, Leopoldo Lopez, uh, Antonio Ledesma, who is also a coordinator of the uh, group uh, Bravo Prevo, and Maria. Machado of uh, the political party Adelante have created a document called An Agreement for a Transition to Democracy. They all signed this agreement and they submitted it to the citizens and other political parties for them to join them. A few days later, Mr. Antonio Ledesma was jailed violently. As Tamara told us this morning, uh, they went into his office uh, armed and took him without an arrest warrant. He was uh, uh, abducted for a number of hours, and the third person who signed this agreement was, was Maria Corina. And we fear for her safety. We fear for her life. We fear that because she expresses her convictions, she will also be thrown into jail. So I will let you listen to her message yourselves. I am Maria Corina Machado of the National Assembly. My country is living through the bleakest and most critical moment in its history and for that of future generations. We have had a coup d'etat carried out by the state. Mr. Maduro and his regime have shown that this militaristic regime has links with the criminal underworld and with international drug networks. They have no scruples in the way that they are trying to subdue and repress our people. In the past few hours, repression has been stepped up, as well as persecution, censorship, and torture. Students, journalists, tweeters, trade unionists, and businessmen have been taken prisoner without any arrest warrants issued and without having there committed any offense. In the past few hours, the mayor of Caracas, Antonio Ledesman, has been arrested. He was abducted from his office without an arrest warrant, and he was sent to Ramon Verde military prison, where national leader Leopold Lopez has been detained for the past year. Antonio Ledesman, Leopold Lopez, and I have been accused of promoting and breaking constitutional order for having called a national meeting to achieve reconciliation with all Venezuelans and to rebuild the country during our next step towards a peaceful transition to democracy within a constitutional framework. I want to say to you, Mr. Maduro, that I support every one of the ideas, words, spirit, and values of the National Transition Agreement that we invite all Venezuelans to endorse. I have been physically attacked. My nose was broken in the National Assembly under the eyes of Mr. Cabello, President of the National Assembly. I have been accused of terrorism and of betraying my country because I denounced Venezuelans' human rights violations to the Organization of American States. I have been accused of assassination and conspiracy. My family and I have been attacked, and even the lives of my children have been threatened. 
For the past year, I've been prohibited from leaving my country, from carrying a message about how we Venezuelans are determined to fight until we achieve democracy and freedom. Democratic governments of the world for many years have turned their backs on us, perhaps for economic or geopolitical reasons. But Mr. Maduro has crossed a red line. And now the world knows that he massively and systematically is violating, violating human rights, the Venezuelan constitution, and international agreements. And for this reason, I'd like to say to all democracy lovers in the world that we need you to speak up, to speak out, and stand beside the people of Venezuela. We hope the world will take a firm stand now to support our fight for democracy in Venezuela and reject the the dictatorship now governing our country. We in Venezuela will carry out our task and we will achieve a peaceful transition to democracy and freedom soon. Have confidence in us. We are confident that you will show your solidarity with us. This, is, this was very poignant. And it's also a warning because Venezuela was not China. It wasn't Iran. It's a country that has institutions. It has a constitution. It has a democratic past. And for more than 10 years now, we have witnessed a de progressive decline, an ongoing slide. And the population has reacted and protested. And it seems to me that at the eve of the meeting of, of, on human rights, democratic governments should take action to try and help to liberate those who have been imprisoned and so that the deputy can get her seat back in parliament. It is time for people who work for human rights in civil, in civil rights, learn to work as well as the, those who are tyrants do, working together and show solidarity in Venezuela we are, they fight for liberty in Iran. In Iran, they fight for liberty in, in Saudi Arabia. And in Saudi Arabia, and we are fighting for liberty in France. So we should understand that what is happening, and we should take action in consequence. I wonder if we have time to take any questions. It would seem we do not. I would like to thank Il for having shed light on some of the violations uh, in North Korea. And we see how the Western governments are accomplices to one of the most tyrannical governments. And we hope that uh, trade unionists will rally round to defend the rights of workers in North Korea. And I'd like to thank you. Tyrannical governments, and 